this is generating IDOCs uh, for SAP in BizTalk. Uh, right now, I'm using Visual Studio 2010. This is going to apply really to 2010 and above, any, anything you're probably using right now. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably already know this, but I'll explain it real quick why you'd want to do a thing like this. Um, SAP is probably the largest ERP vendor out there. I think that's right. Um, if you're setting up BizTalk as middleware, and a lot of organizations, if they're using SAP as an ERP, you'll probably need to talk to it to uh, perform various things like uh, uh, purchase orders or invoicing. All of that's very common. Uh, depends on the industry. So I'm going to walk through generating an IDOC. The trick is, is you need to have a live instance of SAP to point at in order to generate your, your IDOCs. And some of the, the reason for that is uh, it'll become apparent in a minute. Um, there aren't, aren't too many uh, live SAP systems just sitting around uh, that you can use. So um, I'm going to blur out some of the information here, not to out the client I'm working with right now, although I'm sure they wouldn't mind that much. Um, so what you do is you start off with a brand new BizTalk uh, project, and uh, I've got one right here. I've already done that. So uh, you just right click and say add generated item, and then you go to add adapter metadata. I click on that, and uh, you see all your line of business uh, adapters over here. I scroll down to WCF SAP, I click next, and uh, I'm going to make this big so you can see it better. Uh, the first thing you want to do is um, configure your connection. And this is probably the, the hardest thing you'll have to do getting out of the gate from, from, the, get, from, the, from the beginning. Um, I'm going to hit configure here. Again, it's going to be blurred out. Um, you'll, you'll probably need to talk to the SAP basis administrator to get a lot of these values. Um, they need to set these up. They need to tell you what, what, what they are. They need to start a program running in SAP in order to even uh, talk to it. Uh, so you need to know the actual IP address of the server. The system number is important. The client number is important. And then the, uh, the gateway host, gateway service, and program ID uh, is information they need to tell you uh, how to connect. So this is, this is similar to connecting to a database. You need to have the connection information. Uh, it needs to be running on their end. Um, so once you have that set up and you've got the uh, authentication set up, you're ready to connect. So I'm going to do that. And what you'll see is uh, on the left, you've got the contract type and then you've got your selection of, of what kind of artifact you want to generate. This uh, contract type is important. This is inbound and outbound, essentially. Um, this is with respect to BizTalk, not SAP. So when it says outbound, this is BizTalk sending SAP documents. If it is inbound, it is SAP sending BizTalk documents. So I'm going to select this. You've got your, your IDOCs, which you're going to use normally, you know, RFCs and your transactional RFC. Uh, I'm going to explode out IDOC. I think IDOC stands for intermediate document and I don't actually believe it's specific to SAP but I think they're the only large player that has adopted it um, so I'm just scrolling down you can see how many how many different types of transactions they have I'm gonna look for the orders which would be correspond to a port purchase order fairly common so here we have orders um, and you see there's there's different versions of orders um, in this case, they've actually modified the, uh, the orders IDOC, and, and that, that'll show up as Z extension. Um, you need to know exactly what type of order they're going to be sending you, because um, if, if you generate the wrong artifact, it, you're going to find out real quick uh, that you've, you've messed up. And it's, it's difficult to regenerate your, your artifacts and remap everything um, after the fact. So you need to know upfront what you're going to be using. So I've expanded out orders 05, 
and you can see even there's there's even more versions um, after that again you need to know the exact version type uh, so I've clicked the latest one it has the operation here which is receive which makes sense because this is inbound we're going to be receiving it from SAP so I'm going to add it here I'm going to click OK let Visual Studio generate the artifacts and what it's generated there on the right in the Solution Explorer is BizTalk orchestration, which is going to have generic types and then some schemas. I'm probably going to end up changing these schemas to, to whatever your naming convention is. Um, you've got two schemas here, this one uh, and this one. They both just contain um, common types. And then you've got these two, which reference those type and is the actual schema you're going to be using. Um, so in this case, we've got receive, you've got your IDOC data, and then you've got your segments in your in your IDOC, uh, which you need map from. I'm not going to go through mapping here, but this this is your schema. Um, and then this one, you, you probably throw it away in this case because it's inbound. It says receive response. There's no there's no response you give SAP once you give once you go in, once you get the IDOC, um, but it's there in case you want it. So. Uh, so those are your schemas, and then your orchestration um, has some types in it. So you've got your multi-part message types for the receive and the receive response and your port for it. Um, you know, this is going to be your activation port in your orchestration. Um, I can go ahead and show you how to do that. Receive, receive, IDOC, orders, and then use an existing port type, use that, uh, re receiving, okay, and then you would just create your receive shape and go like this. Again, you don't have to do, you don't have to send a response back to SAP. Um, and there, there you have it. That's how you generate your IDOCs. It's going to be the same process for uh, any type of, of IDOC, inner, inbound or outbound. So that's generating IDOCs.